Hey everyone, welcome back to Ansible AWS series. Well, in today's video, we'll be focusing on how to build an execution environment so that we can run the playbooks and the jobs in the Ansible Tower or the AWS. So in earlier versions of Ansible Engine, there was an advantage of having all the modules and plugin available out of the box. Meaning once we install the Ansible, we would have all the common modules and plugin available by default. But if you probably notice that number of modules included within the Ansible continues to grow from time to time and managing and packaging them as part of the Ansible engine has become very challenging. And on top of that, collection is being moved out of the Ansible engine and we need to find a way to consolidate it everything seamless to create a portable execution runtime. That is precisely what the execution environment will comes into the play in Ansible. So in today's video, I will explain what is inside the execution environment definition file with animated presentations and how to build that in step by step. I'm sure this video is going to help you to make a quick runtime docker image. So please watch this video till the end to learn those tricks. And if you're watching this channel first time, I will be uploading videos related to DevOps, network automations very frequently. So please be sure to subscribe and press the like button to reach to the maximum people. So with that, let's get into today's video. So building an execution image is a two-step process. So in the first phase, we will define all the dependencies file in the required format. In step two, we'll chain all those dependencies and execute them. So let's do a closer look here. The first one would be the requirement.yml where we specify the collection informations, which usually we pull from the Ansible Galaxy, which is an open source cloud platform. So in this case, we are going to have a collection for Cisco iOS gear, AWS and Kubernetes. And this collection include all the modules and its dependencies to run those collections. Next up, we have the requirement.txt. If you are from Python world, you know the purpose of this file where we define the Python dependencies. So in this case, any dependencies we need additionally to run the playbooks besides the Python dependencies that are required outside the collection Python. For example, to run the Cisco iOS module, we need a couple of Python dependencies which will be loaded as part of collection definition. But we need anything outside of that, we can specify it here. So in this example, we'll use NetMiko, PyATS, REST libraries. So third and final is the pinep.txt which is not mandatory but in case you want to define any system dependencies for example git. So once we have all these three files ready we can create a definition file called execution-environment.yml and this definition file we create have the different section which has the parent image or the base image ansible configuration file etc along with about three dependencies files we just discussed so once we create the environment file we can run the ansible builder command which produce a container image so ansible builder is used to read and validate your definition file and create a container file and finally pass this container file to the portman or docker which then package and create your automation execution environment image. So this is the high level process to build an execution environment image for Ansible. So with that, let's get into today's demo. Well, to start off this demo, we need to have a tool called Ansible Builder, which is a command line utility that will help to organize and build an execution environment with the collections and dependencies that you So in a simple term, it's a Python application that will produce a container along with the other file that needed to add the image. So let's see how to do this first. So first let's initiate a poetry project where we are going to install all the Python dependencies and associate files. So it is going to be poetry new, then give the name of the project. So it is going to be AWX underscore EE underscore V1. EE stands for execution environment and we'll have the version one. And you can see that it create a project structures and we'll have a couple of files and folders in it. The important one is a toml file which keep all the metadata of the dependencies. And if you want to learn more about how poetry works in python, I would highly suggest to go through these two videos that will build a solid knowledge on this. So here let's create a poetry shell which will initiate a virtual environment. And the first command we are going to type is to install the ansible builder which is going to be pip install ansible builder. 
installation is quite simple so if you're on pip list we can see the version 3 of the ansible builder has been installed now what we want to do here is to check the command for the ansible builder with the help so now any command for the ansible builder start with the ansible hyphen builder and put the hyphen hyphen help to know all the available command lines so here we can see create build and introspect so in this video we will be exclusively using build command but create is used only when if you want to just create the docker file and you don't want to build the image so let's go ahead and run the build command here and we'll just run without giving any tag so we have some error which says that it cannot find the file called execution hyphen environment so which obviously is valid error because we don't have them defined yet so now what i'm going to do is to show you how we can create this file so we'll create this file on the project folder itself and copy the content which i have created for this video so i'm going to put that into my gitlab page if you want to grab a copy of it the first thing on this file contains the versions which i'm going to put as one and declare the base image which we are picking from q so you can go this link and find the required image but for this demo let's go with stable 2.10 versions so the next thing we want to do here is a dependency information which we have discussed so i'm going to call requirement.yaml and which is downloaded from the galaxy and the requirement txt and the requirements.txt for the python and bindp for the system that's all we are going to put onto this simple environment file so let's save it and close this one so now I'm going to show you how the requirement.yml file look like. So there are different ways you can do. I have covered some of them on my Ansible collection video. I'll tag that here if you want to go through. So this will start with the collection keyword and start defining the collection name, which we can get it from the Ansible hyphen galaxy. In case you want to go with a specific version, we can declare that as well here. So here we basically have three collections, one for Cisco, other for Arisa EOS. Then we also have the netcom collections for the netcom rest api plugins so let's go ahead and save this file so we need to create a request.txt for all the python dependencies course so i'm going to put netmiku and pyats module here but you can add more based on your playbook requirements now the final file we need to put here is a bindp.txt for the system dependencies where we will specify for git version control system so now we have all the necessary files ready for the project setup and we can go ahead with the build process so to start the build process we need to use ansible hyphen builder command then use build then add tag with hyphen t i'm going to add awx hyphen ee net automation hyphen v1 then specify hyphen v space 3 to have so all the verbos printed on the screen while running so this will show all the execution step as it progress so while it is running we can see that there is a folder called context created on the project path and there is underscore build folder and we have a docker file inside it so if we open this docker file we'll find all the metadata for creating a container image the build process usually goes about 10-15 minutes, depends on the size of your requirement files and the internet speed. Now the image build process is almost getting completed. So we can have the share value for the image and the docker rebuild is done. Next we can run the docker command to see if the docker image has been built. So let's type docker images to show all the docker images we have in this machine. So here under the repository, we can see that there is an AWS underscore EE automation image we have been built and tag as V1. Then we have the image ID and it's created 46 seconds ago and the image size. Now we have the image ready and we can use this for the Ansible execution environment on the AWS platform. So on the next video, we are going to see how to ship this image to a public repository where we can run the playbook using the newly created execution image. So with that, I'll wrap up this video. Again, thank you for watching and see you soon.